discussion this afternoon are, uh, I thought I would change the subject if, if that's okay. Uh, we're going to talk about nuclear power. No? Oh, nah, let's go back to it. Nah. We'll talk about green activists. Are they idealists or useful idiots? Or perhaps something else? Maybe ideologues. And uh, uh, I think our panelists all have experience working with or against Green Party and Green activists. And so we're going to learn more about their experiences and the, some of the problems they've had and then perhaps some solutions for the future because I think in each panel we've talked about and should always talk about more about the future and what can we do about the problems that we all know uh, exists. So I'd like to start um, by asking uh, Tomas, if you would, um, what's been your experience with interaction with Green Party and green activists. I understand you have some interesting stories about uh, some of the things that they've done. And perhaps you can focus on, have you been able to work with some of the green activists, or has it been just impossible to even reason with them in any way? I'm, I'm curious what your experience has been. Hello. Thank you for this question. That's right. I have a lot of experience when it comes to green or environmental organizations or activists or he, people who think about themselves that they are green activists because this is because I represent public transportation, a railway operator, which is the, the greenest means of transport. And currently, it's strongly promoted in the EU because of the European Green Deal, because of cutting down all of uh, emissions that come from transportation. And here, the railways seem to be the means of transport which might meet the requirements. So on the one hand, uh, we, uh, well, green activists like us the railway people, because this is the least uh, polluting uh, means of transportation, but also we have to face some absurd situations which, which uh, are a result of the EU's uh, um, requirements. We are a low emission means of transport because we run on electricity. Most of our rolling stock does it uh, doesn't produce any any fumes, any any emissions. And so take a look at the current energy prices, which to a large extent as a consequence of uh, the European decisions, because the European decisions uh, have an in impact on the price of electricity. So out of a sudden, it turns out that despite the fact that we are green and we meet the, the green environments, our operational costs keep going up because we rely on electricity and the business needs to be profitable. So if we have high operational costs, this means we should increase uh, the ticket prices. If we do that, uh, on the other hand, we will have fewer passengers. And sometimes situa the situation becomes absurd. So take the example of the Hungarian railways. They decided that uh, the prices of electricity uh, were so high that they decided to give up uh, electrical locomotive as, and to switch to all the um, conventional um, fossil fuel locomotives. So this is one of the absurds of the activism. They would like to help. They would like to solve a problem, but some of their ideas are are uh, well some of their ideas hit hit the railways as the, the greenest uh, means of transportation and this is a huge huge problem uh, which will need to be solved if we are we are to be a low emission means of transport we should run on electricity and if we are to run on electricity the price of it should be reasonable 
because otherwise we will have to uh, make the passengers pay for the costs and the price won't be attractive for them. Is that there are many green activists who support the railroads and support the work you're doing because it's more cost effective and less polluting. Um, but are there some extremists that no matter what they want to shut down uh, the railroads entirely or they're willing to work with you? It sounds like they're willing to work with you then uh, to advance the electrification of the railroads and uh, it appears that there's some reasonable people within the green community that understand this. Is that, would that be accurate? Well, we have uh, this um, classical example of useful idiots. I have good intentions. I would like to use a environmentally friendly means of transport. But th what they do, and they do different things, and as a consequence of what they do, we, the railways, have higher costs, higher operational costs. So as a consequence, we are, we are uh, dashing uh, the, the, the transport. We are, we are destroying the transport, which we consider the greenest. So we want to electrify more lines, more rail services, but the price of electricity is an issue. Uh, the EU imposes different types of taxes on us, on electricity. Uh, in Poland, there is a tax that um, every business pays if, uh, if a company uses electricity between 8 to 6 p.m. Uh, if you use electricity between 6 to 8, um, 6 to 6 p.m., you have to pay this tax. And the railways are, well, they also have to, have to pay the, the same tax, the same as uh, steel works, as every other business. So we use electricity, we have to pay this additional tax. There's no waiver for us, There's, there is no exemption for us. So this means that they talk a lot about um, supporting and fostering railways, but uh, in practice they give us another tax which makes us less competitive. Those on the, on the far left or in the green movement, do you find uh, some of them open and willing to listen and come to compromises to advance uh, a, a, uh, an agenda that's reasonable or for the most part, in your experience, have they been unreasonable and unwilling to uh, uh, participate in any sort of uh, um, compromises? Well, there are probably some people who have goodwill and who really want in these mobilizations, general mobilizations, who want really to look for some solutions which are less harmful for everybody. But the experience is that normally the control of this kind of, of movement a, goes over always to, to people who work with another agenda. And the other agenda is, I wanted to explain it with a very, it's a very clear example, which was the, uh, the it was the, um, the nuclear, the nuclear energy in Spain. The nuclear energy in Spain ended because of terrorism. Nobody knows it, probably. Uh, it was then disguised as something else. But it was terrorism from ETA, from the terrorist separatist uh, group of ETA, which had many contacts to Eastern Europe, to South America, to different communist groups, and also to communist groups inside Spain, who brought the, the program, the nuclear program, to an end. Uh, they killed the engineers. They attempted with bombs against the construction of Lemonith, the northern coast in Vizcaya, uh, uh, and then they killed the engineer, the chief engineer of this construction. And so the government came to the, came to the conclusion that they could uh, not go on with this plant in the Basque country uh, because of terrorism. And so to disguise it as, a, as an ideological, uh, ecological uh, solution, decision, they closed other, uh, other central uh, uh, nuclear facilities which were just going to enter into, into function, which would have solved many of the problems of the enormous dependency that 
Spain has. Uh, that was Valde Caballeros was a was a, a, a facility, a nuclear facility, with similar to Le Mans, which was ready, ready to open, and they were closed, and the others closed, and there was never again a licitation for for a nuclear um, a nuclear facility in Spain. I'm speaking about the 80s. Uh, that's in the uh, middle of the middle of the 80s. Uh, that is a decision that was enormously. Uh, it had enormous consequences for Spain, uh, and uh, and it was disastrous. The, the the nuclear the facilities nuclear facilities which were in which were in this moment in function they they went on, and now the the, the left wing um, governments socialist governments decided to close them all. So we are now uh, sitting there almost uh, as ridiculous in the decisions as Mrs. Merkel in, in its moment, and with the same problems as Mrs. Merkel, with one uh, thing that there is, is even serious, far more serious, that through this pressure, the left-wing government is destroying the, 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 the units we had for coal, the coal for the coal production, which are now being taken into 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 function again in in Germany, which are working again in Germany, they can't work in Spain because they were blown up. <laughs> so uh, the situation in Spain with the energy, uh, where the enormous business was made with the with the alternative energy, with the which had no resistance whatsoever because the whole left was with the lobbies of the solar and and wind energy. Uh, they made an enormous business, uh, the people of this of this of this sector, with the with the socialist with the socialist government, with no opposition whatsoever. Although the energy, the nuclear energy, had this resistance, and the the, the resistance to the to the nuclear uh, power that the terrorists made so effective, was a left wing uh, mobilization all over Europe, as, as you know. And it was nurtured by agents from the East, of course from the East, but also from the Arab countries. I mean, I know, for example, I know cases of financing, direct financing, by Libya's embassies in, in Europe. So it sounds like what you're saying is that uh, there are useful idiots who believe in protecting the environment, but that the leadership uh, behind the scenes, it's for economic reasons, not for... Uh, environmental reasons. It is for the uh, economies of uh, the countries that have large amounts of oil and want to be able to export them. And they do not want other countries to be self-sufficient in any way, whether it be nuclear or coal or electricity. So they will be dependent uh, on these other. And, and that's where the movement is financed and that's what drives the movement. Is that So it is. We had, for example, our our one of the sources of, of uh, it's the hydroelectric uh, plant, uh, um, the the seeds. How do you say the pantanos? Uh, Staudam in German. How do you say it in English? Well, hydroelectric um, um, dam with the dams and so on. Uh, we had them from the from the dictatorship, from before the democracy, mm -hmm. and which were really effective, were very good, but they are ideologically condemned by the left because uh, that was the way Franco was enormously effective in bringing, in bringing electricity to all Spain, which they hadn't, you know? And so we have there also this kind of demonization of, of alternative sources mm -hmm. of, of energy which are not, which are not the, the ones they want, where they have, are, be, are, are feeding themselves because they are being the whole discourse of ecological, radical ecological discourse, the narrative that you have in, 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 in the Western countries, mm -hmm. is, is fed, or obviously fed by the alternative corporations as well. I mean, the corporations. Now, the, now are, it seems that the na this narrative is uh, um, first introduced uh, in our schools, in universities, and before. And, and Bhaktash, if you can yeah. speak to that, I understand you have. Uh, experience uh, with uh, the green movement 
at the universities and perhaps uh, in, in our schools where the, uh, the, the indoctrination of students is where this begins. And that's perhaps the useful idiots part of this where people who um, they, they believe they want to help the environment, but they're being used by others for other means through the environmental movement. Can you speak to that, uh, uh, your experience with that and your knowledge of it? Okay, so um, speaking about my experience, be it at schools or at universities, well, if you take um, the envir environmentalists, I would say that over the last year we've been witnessing some trends because the young people usually tap into trends. This is also related to the fact that the internet is so popular. So sometimes we have some fashionable topics. We used to speak around the year 2015. Uh, there was a trend like uh, uh, migration was a topical issue. Now it's uh, the environment. And uh, this is um, to a large extent due to the fact that teachers and professors are often are often are leftists and they support this. The youth, the youth uh, environmental strike was uh, was very popular in Poland, and many very good high schools from Warsaw took part in the strike. And also, this movement is very strongly, very visible at universities, and some prof some leftist professors also support it. And uh, also on my way to this conference, I also came across uh, some Greenpeace activists. And they were encouraging people, passers-by, to, to, to join them. They have a lot of money. And they try to influence young people. And we have to say that young people were, well, well they are in the, their views are in the process of, of being shaped, not, not fully mature yet. And they think that they are good, doing good things. They want to have a clean planet and animal welfare, etc. But the problem uh, lies in practice because uh, the methods of uh, green movements often uh, are far from perfect because uh, I will tell you about my experience over 10 years ago. This was related to Greenpeace. I was still a school a, a, a school uh, child and we had this controversy. The Rospuda Valley is a, re a reserve in Poland, natural reserve. Some Greenpeace was fighting to preserve it and the other party wanted to build a, a road over there, but no one cared about the, popu the local population that the road to be built would also help local people. And this is the problem of uh, green activists. They, they care about uh, the environment, but they don't pay attention to costs at all. Well, uh, Poland, for example, is a successful country. Uh, over the last three decades, Poland has been largely a successful country economy-wise, but still we have to catch up with the West. But if um, what they want, uh, well, if they want Poland to give up coal immediately, this would be very expensive, very costly, and I think that this would be very troublesome for some for this Polish young economy. So, uh, green movements, the green movements d don't realize that Poland is not uh, on its own in the world and Spain, well, each country cannot act on its own. So, there are many countries in the world. So, it, if some countries uh, practically will be killing themselves to meet the, the harshest green requirements, still we will have China, which will keep doing what they want to do. And if you take their population and their impact uh, as a global economy, they will pollute the environment more than we will. So we have to stay, be reasonable. 
and uh, green conservatives here could play a role because they can promote this green narrative because we have to pay we have to take care of the environment because we pass the planet from generation to generation pass it over to our grandchildren etc so this is conservative but we need to strip the, the protection of environment of, of this um, leftist ideology. That uh, uh, animal activism is part of the Green Party agenda. And I understand uh, uh, Pienka de la Svergeziente was a program uh, of the Five for Animals that appear to bridge the, the Green Party with uh, law and justice. And uh, uh, perhaps, uh, Tomas, if you wanted to, uh, to, to speak to that, is that a way to uh, convince or to get more young people in particular um, and green activists to understand that uh, sometimes the goals can be the same uh, and, and a way to reach them and keep them open-minded about some of the other issues that we're trying to convince them about. How was my Polish? <laughs> yes, that was fully understood. Yes, Piątka dla Zwierząt was a very controversial program which had a lot of residence, resonance in Poland. Uh, including the research of Rzeczpospolita, one of the leading publications, uh, dailies, which was done about two, three days after the publication of the assumptions of uh, this. Uh, the solution was uh, by, uh, con considered supported by 70%. However, some of those, let's say, provisions could have been defined more specifically because they touched the interests of certain manufacturers groups or of uh, farmers, and that was the basic controversy. Coming from such a more axiological perspective, we are not, let's say, revealing uh, conservatives, green certificates, conservatives, something new. Respect towards animal as lower brothers are known at least from the time of Francis, uh, St. Francis of Assisi. So it's not something unnatural of, uh, for individuals who have uh, Christian values or uh, any kind of, it's like do not respect those who are of lesser uh, dimensions than you, but if you have something to counteract cruelty towards animals, do something with that. During the last 30 years, since 1989, we have diametrically changed our attitude towards animals, especially pets. I remember about 10, 15 years ago, it was normal and traditional in Polish homes that you bought, let's say, a Christmas a live carp fish which swam in your bathtub alive and then the father or the head of the family or the mother uh, she would they would kill the carp for Christmas Eve and that was completely normal um, just like towards animals uh, any kind of domesticated animals dogs who were also guard dogs uh, of a farm or agriculture um, and sometimes they didn't have very merciful let's say conditions they were treated brutally and they were chained up simply as a guard dog so these were the standard 20 30 50 years ago but now i see that because many individuals have pets they treat them as members of the family. So axiologically, the attitude towards uh, animals is changing. And also these postulates. And I want, don't want to say that this is some radical ecology. This is um, not simply treating animals without cruelty. It's popular in Poland. And of course, this is a question 
whether this ob objective serves the uh, the means, whether the uh, this program could have been written up better and presented better. Probably yes, definitely. But there is a certain trend in any case that's visible, that's present, that we treat animals better irrespective of whether they are farm animals or pets, home pets. It's not, I'm cutting away from this kind of radical views, green, vegan activists who are saying absolutely no farm animals, no um, caged um, farms, that peop humans shouldn't eat meat. That's curious and taking uh, uh, taking into consideration the vitamins and minerals that we need, a plant-based diet, explicit plant, uh, solely plant-based diet is not right for everybody. We need to find some balance, but the point is not, not to uh, not use animals but to consume them but to, to treat them with dignity and this was a direction and a step this initiative didn't end with a success but it caused a discussion and the poll that I mentioned the general poll in Judge Pospolita and this publication that I mentioned turned out that the majority of people in Poland think similarly of course, it can be different how to reach that goal, but they believe that these animals should be treated better. And according to me, I think that that writes in well with green conservatism. Philip, with Students for Liberty, was optimistic about the future and young people being open-minded uh, to the needs of people rather than just the environment, that these projects affect the local community and that the students understand this and that that might be a way forward. So, uh, Herman, I don't know if you wanted to weigh in on the, well, yeah, on the Five yeah. for Animals or, or just talk more about uh, the, the potential, the hope for the future. We talked about this last night at dinner and uh, we'd love for you to share your, your thoughts about how to approach the, uh, the, the leadership of the Green Party and the Green Movement as opposed to the, the movement, the, the rank and file, uh, who may be more open-minded uh, and perhaps can be communicated with in a way uh, to peel away some of the support uh, of, the, of the leaders. We have, a, we, have an enormous, we have an enormous challenge here because we, we have been sleeping 50 years and they, the left, has been using ecology uh, for their own means uh, since then. So as in so many other fields, we have to recover. We used to call it in, in Spain, in my party, in Vox, la reconquista. Reconquista is to reconquer the whole space that ha we have left to the left, <laughs> to the left, not acting uh, when we should have done it. Uh, speaking about the, 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 this conservative challenge with the, with the, with the um, with ecology, I think we have a book, we have a Roger Scruton's book, which is very helpful, uh, very helpful for people for reflection uh, on it. I mean, we are the conservatives, means conservative. We are the one who wants to conserve, con to conserve and give over intact and better the, the planet to our children because we want to have children, not like others who don't want to have children. So we have a, we have a mission in ourselves as conservatives to, to, to protect, to protect nature and to, and to use it always with a, with a, with a respect for first, for believers, for, for work of God. And, and for all of us, for, for what is this, uh, the, the, the heritage we give, we give to our next uh, generations, uh, this uh, should make it, uh, uh, should uh, be always be clear. But we have many, many traps with this, uh, with this respect for the, for the nature. Respect for the nature is not uh, these campaigns of animalism, as we call it. Uh, this animalism is in reality, it's an ideological, very poisonous way, ideological way of a, a, com a, of a combat, a, of trying to depose human beings of their, char of their unique character. 
Uh, that means to make uh, the animals so human that the humans are all of us are the same as the animals. And so we can have abortion, we can have euthanasia, we can have, we are individuals who are interchangeable like rabbits or like cattle or like everything else. We say they have rights, but in, in reality what we, they are doing is reducing our view, our value, and the, the value of the human rights. Uh, giving them to the animals. What we are seeing with this ideology uh, on the practical uh, terms is, is enormous. We had, an, uh, um, we had some, some regulatory uh, laws in, in, the in the European Union for the... Um, you, just, you just spoke about it, this um, howlers, um where you put the animals inside the cages. cages, sorry, cages for cages. We had some regulatory, uh, some very strong regulatory on cages for different kind of animals and transport of animals and, and for growing these animals. They were changed 10 years ago. People had in the, in the countryside, in many countries, had to make an enormous investment for, for changing this, uh, these cages. The cages in Spain, were, were bought all bought by Morocco and by other Southern African, Northern African uh, countries where they are used and being bred the, the, the animals there. This is Spanish, uh, the Spanish uh, uh, people there, they invested the money in the new ones and now they, want, they are working for the total prohibition of the cages for some of these breeds. Uh, that uh, in 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 animals in 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 the European Union. That means it's it's an absolute folly uh, uh, development, where uh, in in name of the of the rights of the animals, you 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 go into a way where you destroy where you destroy the 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 possibility of of this of these breeds. In, in 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 the in the economy and on the on the farmland on the on, and for many in many places it's the only way of keeping of keeping the farm if they want if they want to ban now these cages this economy would be would be killed as is happening with so many things that they are now they are now imposing with the, with the green deal and what they are imposing with this farm to fork program which is like fit for 55 and so many ideological uh, um, regulatory terms in in the in the European Union are completely uh, it, it are complete disaster because they are they are really hostile to humankind uh, uh, and they are they are a uh, Opposite, they are contrary, systematically contrary to the interests of the of the affected, uh, of the affected people. That's one of the things we have to make the effort to combine this respect, this respect with the respect to the people who really live from this uh, from this uh, agriculture, from this breeding, from this cattle. And uh, they are they started now a campaign against meat, and uh, the campaign about against meat is incredible in 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 Brussels from the radical ecological races. We have uh, parts of Spain that only are inhabited because of of because they of the of the breeding of cattle. If not, there would be there, it would be a desert, no? And it will become a desert if if the European Union imposes its criteria and imposes this this green deal. In this sense, we are radically opposed, and I think there we have to we have to have a message. A challenge is to have a message to say we are protecting the hypocrites, our others, and the ideologues that are killing uh, the countryside. Are the uh, are the others? The hypocrisy is enormous. If you see uh, the Amazonas, I mean, I am I am probably the only one in the commission of in the committee for for um, NV, which is which is Medio Ambiente Environment for Environment that defends Bolsonaro. 
Bolsonaro is treated there as a criminal. I mean, Bolsonaro has been protecting the Amazonas. Meanwhile, Morales has been uh, putting fire in the Amazonas for getting, for getting land for, for coca, for, for, for um, uh, growing uh, coca for the cocaine of his, of, of his friends, the narco-terrorists there. And we have the Amazonas is being systematically poisoned from Venezuela. Uh, where the, this mining, the gold mining and the jewel mining with all kind of aggressive chemical, chemical uh, products is doing an enormous harm. You won't see Greenpeace speaking about, about Bolivia and speaking about, about Venezuela, um, the, who are really in this moment the, the worst polluters of the, of the Amazonas. No, they are Bolsonaro bashing every day. <laughs> Baktash, if you would speak to the future, and uh, you mentioned when the, the road was the, the, the road that's being built, and the local people uh, were more con expressed their concern with how it will affect them in a positive way. Is that a way toward reaching younger people, and, and with the message focusing more on people, and it's related to uh, what we've talked about with animals, but that the priority should be on on, on people? and the way that these are, uh, policies are affecting the people, and, uh, uh, and, and it hurts them, uh, whether it's a road or, or the other things, that the, when, when the extremists want to limit uh, development, uh, that it's hurting people, is that a way that I think young people might respond better uh, to our message? Uh, uh, or, or, or anything else that you think. And we're about to wrap up, and I just wanted to keep a little focus now on the future. How do we communicate with people better uh, to convince them that uh, it's not greed and it's not exploitation and uh, to, to, to debate uh, to an even place uh, with people about uh, the dangers of the green agenda? In my opinion, local activities undertaken by various associations or initiatives of local government rep representatives are relevant and valuable. However, I believe the most valuable thing in terms of young people is reaching them through pop culture because pop culture has greatest influence on the views and convictions of young people and you the, the value system certain thoughts presented to a young person are usually uh, conducted and addressed by the by the left and this pertains both to ecology environmental protection as well as various types of other subject matters such as as mentioned by the MP, MEP, the uh, cultural or customary. But in terms of strictly ecological activities, I believe that pop culture and the fact that uh, this fight against meat and promoting veganism has been occurring in a certain is is a certain fashion uh, there is a trend to move away from eating meat with care in terms with care of the environment this is um, promoted by media by stars some stars and some leading newspapers such as Judge Pospolita have a climate section where for several months there were articles which encouraged people that it's the only appropriate way is to completely move away from eating meat and consuming meat and also medical theories uh, there is an attempt to change and alter medical theories that uh, meat is needed and to promote that for a certain lifestyle I also think that an important task for conservatism with support of the rights of animals which Tomasz mentioned to also act for the fact that certain things wouldn't be too radicalized and too distorted so that there would be this um, fight for the rights of animals but 
certain aspects coming from nature. A human being is adapted to eating meat and that they be retained, those views. Future and how we communicate with people in a, in a way that's persuasive uh, and can convince them uh, that uh, being conservative is not antithetical toward the environment and that uh, um, the green way is not the only way. I'm sure that we have a lot to catch up as conservatives because we must admit, at least that was the case uh, in Poland for the last 30 years, that um, ecology, even in terms of respect for the natural envi environment or uh, towards um, animal rights, was left extremism, and the right had to be in a, a contrary position. Now it turns out that not going into any extremes if we want to fight for the common good, and I think that this is a foundation of all conservatives, and speaking more broadly, Republicans, we have to care for our closest surroundings. I don't think that anybody wants to walk around a forest where, where there is trash and litter everywhere. I don't think that every... I, I believe that no average human being is cruel towards uh, pets at home, but we need to set a strict border between our potential supporting conservative ideas that certain respect towards the environment and towards animals cannot go contrary to economic development or to human affluence. We have become accustomed during the last decades of capitalism that we are living at a higher level, at a better level, and it's difficult to imagine that because of some radical green agendas in the winter, I'm going to spend time in a cold flat or home because the cost of energy are going to be so, or I'm going to have such distorted views that I'm going to be afraid to turn on the heater to not cause a um, climate catastrophe. That's absurd. So if we show and we work towards a conciliation, on the one hand, respect for the environment and for animals, maybe sustainable development, but that doesn't mean that it coincide, that it collides with um, living well and better, so that we don't lose as humans from the various conveniences that we have. F for example, from electrical energy, this is something to win, uh, definitely that, that we can agree to and agree on and to win, and I think that this is the trait of young people to I am a radical vegan, I don't eat meat, I'm going to fight with those who don't, who eat meat, I'm going to fight with manufacturers of meat, I'm a radical ecologist, I'm going to shout that Poland has to, by 2030, move away from coal, which is completely impossible. It's destroying our economy and destroying, deteriorating the quality of our um, uh, level. Or I'm going to be a radicalist and fight to fight for against nuclear, uh, nuclear energy. Nuclear energy. This is definitely a, the case of Germany, who basically shot themselves in the foot, and now they're looking for a solution, trying to move away from this dependence on gas, a little bit going into photovoltaics and renewables, which um, the case is that sometimes. There is sun, sometimes there isn't. Sometimes there is wind blowing, sometimes there isn't. So if we try to come to an agreement, but we have examples or uh, blueprints of that in the past. I mentioned St. Francis of Assisi in terms of the respect towards the natural environment. But on the other hand, we're going to ensure 
and give the message that uh, green conservatism is not going to make your life worse as a human being, as a citizen, then I think that's winnable. If we were to realize an extreme agenda, then I think that within two, three years, most people would move away from that agenda, at least here in Poland. Looking how the cost of life are increasing, how the, our standard of life is decreasing, how things were convened. I had conveniences before, and now I do not. From anyone in the audience? Yes, sir, the handsome gentleman. Bjorn? Now? Yeah. Very such, 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 such a simple trick. <laughs> Too simple for a German. <laughs> um, the, um, my question I had for this uh, panel was, um, there doesn't seem to be a, a line of speech between the conservative side and the green side. Um, and in um, so, so, so what's the reason um, in f in our country? So they, most of the Greens simply don't have training. They they go to university but never finish their diplomas and their degrees. Um, they go to politics far too early and they don't understand the questions. It seems sometimes, um, but at the end of the day, we need to talk. So what is your um, your take on this, is it possible even to talk to green politicians and green movements and NGOs directly? Because I don't know an, an answer as, or a solution. I will answer from my experience in the Committee of Environment in the European Parliament. And I will tell you it's very, very difficult to talk to them because they are some people, the radical, the radical members of this, of this movement, who have an enormous capacity of intimidation on the moderates. And so the moderates may agree with you in some things outside the commission, but then they won't publicly oppose uh, the radicals. They can do it maybe in a negotiation, private negotiation, but we never, never publicly. So publicly, you always have the version of the radicals as the one on the upper, on the upper hand, and that's very. And then you have described it very perfectly well. I mean, uh, the difference between people who come to politics after having a professional life and who know something about something and people who come into politics because they have been rioting against the nuclear movement in the 80s and then in the 90s and then against, uh, I don't know what, and then against uh, something else. And then suddenly they are in the European Parliament and they are in the committee. And they are signing and voting and proposing things which affect millions and dozens of millions of people who work daily as he has or she has never worked and who work if enormously and devoted for bringing up the, the children and, 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 and the family and so on and they have and they are affected by decisions which are taken by people who don't have any effect and who, who don't, are, are not submitted to any kind of con quality control in this sense. That means something is pretty wrong in this, in, this, in this situation. And if you come from outside and tell them something, they always have some way, some mechanism to shut you up. I mean, you're a fascist or you're a negationist. Now it's negacionismo till now, since the war, till now, negationism 
was the worst what you could be because it was to negate eh, to to negate the Holocaust, which is an enormous it's 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 a sin almost, but it's a it's a crime. A, a negationism is a, the worst what you could be in politics was to say that the Holocaust didn't happen. Well, now. Everybody who has something to criticize in the ecological radical agenda is being called the same. We have to imagine the escalation of the quality of the aggressiveness against the other thing. So is your solution the, that they just have to be defeated? They have to be defeated. We, there are many of the many people. There is a movement, a left-wing movement in Europe and, and elsewhere. There is a movement. We have now 100 years of communism, 120 uh, uh, victim, mortal victims of communism, 120 million. Uh, so they will try again and try again in one way or another, in a vegan way, in a cannibalistic way, that means in a Soviet way, or in a social democrat way. They will try uh, again. You can't come to terms with them. You have to fight them. They are, they are obviously, they are, they are things of common sense that they also share and that you can take. But you have to win. Because if not, there's nothing. We are, we are in their hands. And their hands are toxic. And their ideas more. Thank you, Herman. So, uh, I guess we're going to be going to a break. Uh, before we do, uh, if everyone will pitch up their, pick up their pitchfork and torch on the way out and march against the Greens for the next <laughs> session, that would be great. Thank you all for your attention, and thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you very much.